The top stories tonight in Y News. U.S. regulators have found the single shot of Johnson & Johnson coronavirus vaccine is safe and effective. The first batch of COVID-19 vaccines from China's Sinovac Biotech is set to arrive in the country on Sunday. Armed Forces of the Philippines Chief Lieutenant General Cirilito Sobejana orders the mandatory vaccination of all AFP personnel. Officials from the Philippine National Police and Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency has no final details yet on what transpired and who should be held liable in yesterday's misencounter. Facebook plans to spend at least $1 billion in the news industry over the next three years. NASA's Perseverance rover sends secret message upon descent on the Red Planet. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Thursday, February 25, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am Maria Latoza. First in the news. U.S. regulators analysis finds that Johnson & Johnson's single-dose vaccine is effective against COVID-19. Maeve Yandog will give us the details live. Yes, Maeve? Arlene, U.S. Food and Drug Administration scientists confirmed that Johnson & Johnson's single-dose COVID-19 vaccine could help speed vaccinations with only one dose required. Johnson & Johnson tested the vaccine in 44,000 people from the U.S., Latin America, and South Africa. They previously announced that the vaccine was 72% effective in the U.S., 66% in Latin America, and 57% in South Africa. The vaccine is said to be effective at preventing moderate to severe COVID-19, and there were no hospitalizations or deaths starting 28 days after vaccination based from the early study results. FDA's independent advisors will further debate and make a final decision in the coming days if the evidence is strong enough in order to recommend this vaccine, making it in track towards becoming the world's first one-dose option and also a third vaccine option for the U.S. Although it should also be noted that FDA's analysis cautioned that it is not yet clear if the vaccine works well against the different mutated versions of the virus. Meanwhile, Johnson & Johnson told the U.S. Congress this week that it is expecting to provide 20 million doses by the end of March. And worldwide, they aim to produce around a billion doses by the end of this year. Harleen? Maeve, in comparison to the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines that are already being used in the U.S., will Johnson & Johnson's single-dose vaccine provide a better option? Well, Harleen, the overall efficacy rates may suggest that Johnson & Johnson's vaccine is not quite as strong as its two-dose competitors. But aside from that, most COVID-19 vaccines have been tested differently, which makes comparisons between the shots nearly impossible. Johnson & Johnson's single-dose shot makes it easier to use and handle as it can last for three months in the refrigerator compared to other vaccines that must be kept frozen. Furthermore, the World Health Organization and European regulators are also considering Johnson & Johnson's vaccine. Back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Maven Dog, reporting live from Australia. 
The long wait is over as the Philippines is set to receive its first batch of COVID-19 vaccines from China's Sinovac Biotech. The donated vaccines will arrive in the country this weekend. Meanwhile, the palace has started to study whether or not President Rodrigo Duterte could take the Sinopharm vaccine under the compassionate use permit. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. The Philippine government is grateful because at last the donated 600,000 doses of coronavac by China will arrive in the country. The palace expects the rollout of the vaccination program may begin as early as Monday. According to Chinese Ambassador to the Philippines Wang Xilian, the donation of the vaccines is a testament to the solidarity, friendship and partnership between the Philippines and China. Inaasahan na darating sa araw ng linggo, itong linggong po ito ha, ang Sinovac. Kaya po excited na tayong lahat. Uh, inaasahan po at at least ang pinaplano natin ay uh, sasalubungin po ng mga opisyal ang pagdating ng mga bakuna. The Philippine General Hospital, which is a dedicated hospital for COVID-19 patients and a priority in the government's vaccination program, hopes majority of its employees will be willing to receive the Chinese vaccines. Medical frontliners will remain on top of the priority list, though the vaccine has not been recommended for health workers by the Food and Drug Administration. The spokesperson of the Philippine General Hospital and a COVID-19 survivor, Dr. Jonas Del Rosario, will receive the first shot. All we need is one day and then we will roll out. No? So if it arrives on Sunday, if I am not mistaken, then we can roll out on Monday. Dahil excited na excited na po ang maraming kababayan natin. Meanwhile, PGH Chief Dr. Gerardo Legaspi reiterated that whatever brand of vaccine approved by the FDA will be welcomed. Hindi naman porkit na nabukunahan nila say, this, this particular vaccine, ng Sinovac, eh walang protection. Ang ibig lang sabihin, uh, ang protection niya eh, hindi uh, uh, as high to prevent mild symptoms from occurring, which probably will... Uh, uh, magiging dahilan to para hindi makapasok ang healthcare workers sa uh, sa ospital no ay siguro yun ang yun ang basis ng FDA para sabihin na hindi siya ideal para sa healthcare workers dahil kahit mild symptom hindi sila papasok no pag uh, nagkaroon sila ng mild symptom at mababawasan ang ating manpower sa ospital the specialist also allayed fears on the efficacy rate of the Chinese vaccines, reiterating that all vaccines approved by the FDA for emergency use, such as the Sinovac, Pfizer, and AstraZeneca, is safe for consumption. Meanwhile, the palace legal team is studying if President Duterte can get the Sinopharm vaccine shots through the compassionate special permit released by the FDA for the 10,000 doses allotted for the PSG. Palace confirmed the vaccine doses have not yet been received by the PSG. Presidential spokesperson Roque believes the president can be inoculated with the Sinopharm vaccine because he prefers it and he is the armed forces commander-in-chief. Some PSG personnel have been vaccinated with the Sinopharm vaccines last year, though FDA did not authorize it then. They are studying kung po pwedeng gamitin yung compassionate use para legal basis for the president to have the Sinopharm vaccine. But it's still being studied by uh, the Malacanang Legal Office. If you ask me as a lawyer, he is the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Philippines and he should be allowed um, to use the Sinopharm under the Compassionate Use uh, License. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Armed Forces of the Philippines has ordered the mandatory vaccination of all its personnel. However, soldiers will be given a prerogative to choose what brand of vaccines they would prefer at their own cost. Joanna no tells us why. As part of their duty and commitment to our fellow men and being among the frontliners amid their battle with the COVID-19 pandemic, members of the Armed Forces of the Philippines are required to get COVID-19 jabs whether they like it or not. AFP Chief General Cyrilito Sobihana orders the mandatory vaccination among the military. Last Tuesday, the Department of National Defense announced that they will be receiving 100,000 doses of donated Sinovac vaccines manufactured from China, and this will be distributed among its batch agencies, including the AFP. 
although they are yet to determine as to how many doses of vaccines will be allotted for the military. The AFP spokesperson explains that a soldier may refuse to take the Chinese vaccine and each personnel will be given an option to choose what brand of vaccine he or she wanted to take but at their own cost. Ang sandatang lakas ng Pilipinas po is not like any ordinary organization. Tayo po ay nasa service, uh, service-oriented uh, uh, organization. Tayo po ang inaasahan sa napakaraming mga mabibigat na tungkulin, kagaya nga po ng pagharap sa pandemya as early as 2020. That is why sinabi natin na hindi option ang pag-ayaw. So balit kinikilala natin yung kanilang kagustuhan na mabakunahan ng brand na gusto nila. Despite the issue on the disputed island in the West Philippine Sea, the military said there is no conflict of interest with the vaccine supply coming from China. Sa amin po sa armed forces, hindi po naman namin yung sinasabing na conflict of interest. Kapagkat para po sa armed forces of the Philippines, yan po ay bakuna, yan po ay napakahalaga para sa amin sa armed forces para mas makatulong tayo. Major General Arevalo stated that they did not conduct a survey as to who among them are willing to be inoculated. He argues that under the military rules, orders coming from their superiors should be followed so they are confident that all of the AFP members will abide. A personnel who will reject to get vaccinated will be subject to corresponding disciplinary actions. We are an organization under military regulation. No? So, ang uh, pagtupad sa mga regulasyon o itinatadhana ng uh, existing legal orders buwat sa ating mga superiors, just like this one, coming from the AP Chief of Staff, no less, will be dealt with uh, disciplinary actions na hindi nila susundin. But we are confident na hindi na tayo darating sa punto na yun. Military doctors and other health workers are still the AFP's top priority for the vaccination program, whatever ranks they belong. The Department of Health and other health experts stated that the vaccination should not be mandatory, but instead a voluntary. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. A group of physicians called on the government to hold vaccine donors liable if adverse effects are experienced on their jab. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. Health Professionals Alliance Against COVID-19 or HPAC believes that the government is prepared on the vaccination rollout in the country. But according to HPAC's member, Dr. Maricar Limpid, there should be an active surveillance and monitoring on the vaccinees. The government should assure that COVID-19 vaccine donors would be held liable if vaccinees experience adverse events of vaccines. It's not just a matter of vaccine, of giving out the vaccines. No? Kasi after mapigay yung vaccines na yan, kailangan may programa pa yan. So magkakaroon pa tayo ng active surveillance. So if we leave it just to these private entities, eh paano na yung active monitoring natin? Hindi na natin malalaman yan. And then again, the accountability. Who will be accountable? So pag binili ito ng mga private entities na ito, they should be held accountable. Kasi sila yung nagbili eh. No? The group also welcomes vaccine donations. However, Dr. Limpin emphasized on the importance of accountability on vaccines. Just like on the arrival of 600,000 coronavac doses of Sinovac donated by China. Ibinibigay ito para ang gobyerno ang makabili ng vaccine. Hindi ito binibigay para bilhin ng mga private entities. I would like to say this is my individual position. Pag binili ng gobyerno, then it is government who should be accountable. But pag binili ito ng private entities, it should be the private entities who should be accountable. Kasi sila yung nagpupumilit ng bibili nila eh. HPAC reminds the government on the importance of process when it comes to the approval of COVID-19 vaccines. Dr. Limpin says there is an existing law citing the need of the Health Technology Assessment Council or HTAC's recommendation before a vaccine is used and procured after FDA's approval. HTAC's assessment include cost minimization issues, ethical, legal, social impact, health system implications, and equity on the distribution of COVID-19 vaccines in areas in the Philippines. This is, of course, regardless whether the government will be the ones purchasing it or whether the vaccines will be donated. 
sana dumaan pa rin doon sa HTAC review ang Sinovac vaccine just like yung ibang mga vaccines no like Pfizer, yung AstraZeneca no. Meanwhile, HTAC is aware of the forthcoming donations from China, but they have no information as of yet whether Sinovac's CoronaVac will be used for medical frontliners inoculation. Wala yata sa plano ng government na yung Sinovac na vaccine na ito ay ibibigay sa healthcare workers. No? I don't think so because alam ko na sa programa ng vaccination program ng gobyerno natin, ang unang-unang mapupunta sa mga healthcare workers yata ay yung Pfizer no? na vaccines. Ay ko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Health, or DOH, reported today 2,269 new confirmed cases of COVID-19, pushing the nationwide count to 568,680. In its latest bulletin, the DOH said 738 patients recovered, bringing the total recoveries to 524,042. The case bulletin showed that 32... 32,437 or 5.7% of the total number of COVID-19 cases were still active cases. The DOH said the COVID-19 death toll in the country increased to 12,201 after 72 new fatalities were included in the nationwide count. For those watching us on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on the right side of your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. Both the Philippine National Police and the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency have not given any final details or statements yet as to what happened and what went wrong in the misencounter between the personnel of the two agencies last night along Commonwealth Avenue, Quezon City. Lea Ilagan explains why. Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency Director General Wilkins Villanueva admits that they and the Philippine National Police have different versions of last night's incident at a mall in Commonwealth Avenue, Quezon City. The PIDEA chief says this is what the Board of Inquiry will investigate. Pwede ba ay pagbigyan niyo muna ang Board of Inquiry to come up with a good and authentic investigation? Kasi... Iba yung, uh, according sa PNP, ito yung nangyari. According sa PDEA, ito yung nangyari. Hindi naman namin pwedeng pagsabungin yung sarili natin. Ito yung nangyari, ito yung nangyari. But both of them are doing their job. On the other hand, according to PNP Chief Police General De Bolsinas, the gathering of evidence like CCTV footage and statements from involved police officers is underway. All the evidences, all the people concerns ay nandoon po sa CIDG. Uh, they are collating evidences and data. We will not ano, preempt sa findings po. PIDEA, for their part, clarified that the agency's operatives conducted a buy-bust operation contrary to reports that it was a sell-bust. Hindi legal yan. Legal lang sa anti-drug operation is buy-bust. Illegal ang cell bus. DG Wilkins said that personnel at fault will face the necessary sanctions. Pidea also denied there is 1.5 million pesos budal money missing. DG Wilkins also pointed out it could be that a syndicate is behind the shootout and the card between Pidea and Quezon City Police District personnel. Four died in the so-called misencounter. Two from the PNP and two from Pidea one agent and one informant. Another four were injured, including one police officer and three PIDEA agents. Despite what happened, the PNP and PIDEA say their relation continues and will not affect the government's war on drugs. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara has ordered the National Bureau of Investigation to conduct a parallel investigation on the alleged misencounter. 
The Senate will conduct a hearing on Tuesday morning on the fatal shootout incident between the Philippine National Police and the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency. Senate Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs Chairperson Senator Ronald De Rosa said he will invite all the involved individuals in the alleged misencounter. The senator believes there was a lack of proper coordination and negligence between the operating units. De La Rosa said he will give opportunity to both parties to explain their side. The senator is hopeful that the proceeding will make them determine if there is a need to amend or revise the laws concerning law enforcement authorities. Meanwhile, Senate President Vicente Soto III says they will also tackle in the hearing his proposed measure that will establish the Presidential Drug Enforcement Agency. Meanwhile, Senator Risa Honteveros is set to file a resolution to investigate what she calls a dramatic and traumatic misencounter between the PNP and PIDEA. The senator also believes there was a lack of coordination between the two units and someone or somewhere must have been grossly negligent. Honteveros also questioned how did the alleged misencounter happen despite the big intelligence funds allocated for the PNP and PIDEA under the 2021 national budget. Meanwhile, the House Committee on Dangerous Drugs will also launch its own proceedings. Surigao del Norte 2nd District Representative Ace Barbers described the incident as highly questionable adding that the shootout happened with the PNP and PIDEA both claiming that their respective anti-drug operations were legitimate. He adds they will also investigate the alleged presence of high-ranking police officers in the uncoordinated by -bust. For her part, Quezon City 2nd District Representative Precious Hippolito Castello is also eyeing to file a resolution to look into the incident which happened in her district. The congresswoman said she wants to focus on the adequacy or inadequacy of Republic Act 9165 or the Comprehensive Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002. Two police officers were reportedly abducted in separate incidents in Metro Manila. Asher Kadapan Jr. will tell us why live. Yes, Asher. Arlene MPD Chief Police Brigadier General Leo Francisco confirms the abduction of Patrolman Rial Lopez Tesoro along the Mapa extension in Santa Mesa, Manila at broad daylight yesterday. As seen in a video taken by a CCTV in the area, two black sports utility vehicles blocked the motorcycle driven by Tesoro along with his live-in partner. Authorities identified four male and one female suspects armed with high-powered guns, alighted the SUVs and forced Tesoro to get in their car and immediately fled. This happened a week after the abduction of police corporal Larry Hilario by 10 still unidentified suspects while the former was on duty with no police companion in Binondo, Manila. The MPD chief said Tesoro has been suspended from police duty due to incident of AWOL or absence without leave. Francisco clarifies that they see no other motive for the abduction as of yet, as they still need to verify all the information they receive with regard to the missing cops' activities outside of work. Here's what Police Brigadier General Francisco said about the matter. Sa pinakamagbigat na nakikita natin kasi uh, tinitingnan namin yung denominator sa dalawa na itong pag-abduct, kung ano yung uh, maare sa mga impormasyon na pumapasok. Talagang uh, mataas yung number ng mga information na it is uh, yung pagwala na sa sa duty kung ano yung mga activity nila. Despite the incidents, the Manila Police assures Manilainos of unimpeded orderly service from the MPD. Sa ating mamamayan sa Manila, alam ko, kung na question nyo, ang siguridad natin ngayon dito sa City of Manila. Pero masasabi ko sa inyo na hanggat andito po ang police, kahit na sasampo na lang kami, titiyakin ko po na maayos ang pagsisirbisyo na gagawin namin. Relatives of Tesoro, on the other hand, grieve against the abduction of the patrolman who has eight children. Wala pa lang namin nalalaman kung nasaan siya. Wala pa lang namin 
Capitán. Nada, no me llega yo, no hay que nada que hacer. No hay nada. Y me le quedé en el de la noche. Early in the MPD is still further investigating the incidents of abduction of the two Manila cops. Arlene? Thank you, Asher Kadapan Jr. reporting live. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA awaits the Department of Public Works and Highways final design of the elevated bus ramps on EDSA to begin its construction this year. Janice Ingente reports. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA is targeting to start the construction of the elevated bus ramps along EDSA four months from now. According to MMDA Chairman Benhur Abalos Jr., they are still waiting for the final design from the Department of Public Works and Highways, which is expected to be submitted next week. Sabi sa akin, next week makukuha ko na. And then we have to go through the process of bidding of procurement, which is about three months to four months. And then, give us four months. Matatapos na po ito. Gagawin namin ito sa corner ng Quezon City and Caloocan po ito. Abalos believes that the elevated bus ramps will ease the traffic congestion due to closed U-turns on EDSA. Pagkaupo ko, itong mga U-turn slots ay sinarado at grabe ang traffic sa EDSA. Yes. Yes, and there's only one way to beat this, no? It's what we call the elevated bus ramp. What does it mean? When you come to a corner, yung mga bus ay aangat siya, aangat siya pa ganun para makapag-U-turn sa ilo ko. The MMDA have so far secured 200 million pesos for the said project and are now looking for more funding sources. Janice Enhente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. As the country marks the 35th anniversary of the EDSA People Power Revolution, President Rodrigo Duterte called on Filipinos to set aside differences and work together. JP Nunez reports. President Rodrigo Duterte called on Filipinos to remain vigilant in protecting their rights and the country's democratic institutions. In his message in the commemoration of the 35th anniversary of the EDSA People Power Revolution, the President acknowledged that the 1986 revolution that toppled the dictatorship of the late President Ferdinand Marcos has enabled Filipinos to enjoy freedom. He expressed optimism that his countrymen would be inspired by the past valiant heroes who fought countless battles for the Philippines' liberty. Former President Fidel Ramos, one of the key figures in the event, challenged Filipinos to keep ablaze the flame of nationalism and continue to embody the unparalleled spirit of the People Power Revolution. Vice President Lenny Robredo, meanwhile, encouraged Filipinos to find the strength, faith, and fire to continue the work that remains to be done needed to fulfill the promise of the historic uprising. Senator Kiko Pangilinan wondered what it would have been life if the people's revolt did not happen and shared a clip on the events that led to the ousting of a dictator. In the video, it tackled massive censorship, spread of fake news. Senate President Vicente Soto III rewinds the history of the song entitled Magkaisa that had become one of the many theme songs on the EDSA revolution. After February 26, eh, kaibigan ko si Congressman Pepin Cuaco, na kapatid ni President Cory. Um, after that, eh, binigay ko sa kanya at uh, pinadala ko kay President Cory yung kopya ng Magkaisa. Uh, ang katotoo nun, nun, siya ang una nakarinig doon. The EDSA People Power Revolution overthrew the government of the late dictator President Ferdinand Marcos and installed the late former President Corazon Aquino to the presidency. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Meanwhile, a group of pediatricians supports the resumption of limited face-to-face -face classes in low-risk areas. This as the group warns that long period of school closures may affect students' health and development. Harleen Delgado will tell us why. 
It has been almost a year since the country suspended face-to-face -face classes due to the COVID-19 pandemic. That is why grade 6 student San Nunez could not help but miss going to school. School po. Para po matutuwang po ng teacher at mabantayan. Kaso ngayon po, hindi pa po ide kasi may pandemic po. Kailangan po muna ng bakuna para sa mga bata po. Grade 7 student Chantel May Rosal now prefers studying in her house under the distance learning setup. Though she admits she also wants to reunite with her classmates. Mas gusto ko po yung sa bahay. Mas minatututunan din po ako doon. Okay lang po na bumalik sa school kasi para din po makita ko po, po yung mga ibang kaklase ko. However, some parents are still doubtful to send their children back to school amid the pandemic. Hindi mo masasabi na mag-worry ang mga magulang tulad ko. Kasi ang mga bata, hindi mo mapipigil yan na maglaro, mag-usap, magtabi. Kung mababantayan ng teacher sa loob ng kwarto, eskwelahan, hanggang dun lang. Pero kapag ka na, nasa labas na ng eskwelahan o nasa loob ng uh, school, eh hindi mo naman sabi kung mababantayan pa ba ng mga teacher. Mas preferred ko po talaga na hindi muna kasi as of now, hindi naman pa po safe yung paligid natin. Hindi rin naman po natin masisigurado kung konti lang po yung kaso or hindi po ng COVID. According to Philippine Pediatric Society, prolonged school closures may cause short-term and long-term effects to students. Dr. John Andrew Camposano explains learning levels under remote or distance learning would not match what face-to-face -face teaching would have achieved. Disruptions can result in a significant learning loss. Um, this, this can be quantified as uh, a one-year school closure would be equivalent to two years of learning loss. And in the long term, um, there is also an increased risk of disengagement. There is a decreased motivation to learn. Some children may not return to school. The group also cited various international studies on limited school reopenings, which show no evidence of transmission risks for students in school settings. A European surveillance study also showed that proportion of reported cases in children remains lower than adults and is lowest among children below 10 years of age. That is why the group supports the reopening of schools in areas with low to zero cases of COVID-19. We would be able to mitigate the effects of prolonged school closure on health and development by opening the schools but being cognizant of the high standards needed in terms of safety measures for everyone. Meanwhile, the Department of the Interior and Local Government also supports the gradual resumption of limited face-to-face -face classes. In my conversations with them, majority of our local chief executives are in favor of uh, uh, reopening classes face-to-face, uh, -face, uh, whether it be blended uh, or uh, otherwise. But what is important is we, uh, we already permit or allow uh, our children uh, to go out uh, for purposes of uh, public education. A total of 1,065 schools are being eyed by the Department of Education for the pilot testing of face-to-face -face classes, which was suspended by President Duterte last month while the country has yet to begin its vaccination program. Horlin Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Hackers have shared detailed plans of the Canadian on the dark web. This report will tell us why. After refusing to pay a cyber ransom, details for a Canadian military spy plane appear to be leaked on the dark web. Canadian business jet manufacturer Bombardier, whose global 6000 jet is used for Saab's Global Eye spy plane system, announced on Tuesday that it recently suffered a limited cybersecurity breach. The leak posted on the dark website Clop Leaks appeared to show specifications and mechanics for the Global Eye Airborne Early Warning and Control Platform developed by the Swedish defense company SAB. The leak also included confidential information about customers, suppliers, and employees. Global Eye is a surveillance solution that ensures quick and accurate coverage of vast distances of air, sea, or land with the ability to switch between surveillance areas in an instant. It is currently in use in Mexico, Brazil, Greece, Pakistan, Thailand, the United Arab Emirates, and Sweden. Mariela Toza, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. 
Meanwhile, a video of a seriously ill Tanzanian minister maskless in, in a coughing fit during a news conference receives widespread condemnation. Marvi Delfin will give us the details in this report. A press briefing held on Tuesday to reassure Tanzania and surrounding nations that the novel coronavirus was not killing its citizens horribly backfired on live television as the public appearance of the seriously ill Tanzanian finance minister Philip Mpango has sparked even more outrage. In an effort to dispel rumors that he died of COVID-19, Mpango had a doctor sit next to him, also maskless, and he spoke to about 10 journalists at a hospital in the country's capital, Dodoma. <coughs> With a shaky voice while panting and coughing heavily, Mpango expressed his condolences to the relatives of two prominent Tanzanians whose deaths were attributed to pneumonia and respiratory challenges. He also announced that he was being discharged from hospital after 14 days, but did not share what he was suffering from. For months, the Tanzanian government has downplayed the virus as President John Magufuli stuck to his controversial stance that the circulating coronavirus would only be defeated by prayer, traditional healing techniques, and herbal cures. However, President Magufuli finally amended his position on Sunday and acknowledged the menace of the ongoing pandemic after the death of his chief secretary and the vice president of the semi-autonomous island region of Zanzibar. President Magufuli has then urged some 60 million people of the East African country to observe precautionary measures, like the wearing of face masks but only locally produced ones, as he continues to be wary about foreign-made goods, including COVID-19 vaccines. Since Tanzania stopped releasing figures in April 2020, case count of COVID-19 infections remains at 509 and just 21 deaths, compared to its neighbor Kenya, which has a similar population, recording 104,000 COVID-19 cases and almost 2,000 deaths. Marvi Dolphin, UN TV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Japan's government plans to cover compensation for any health problems that may arise it may arise here from coronavirus vaccine. Ia De Vera will tell us why. Plus, Ia. Japan's Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare has offered a lump sum of 44,200,000 yen, equivalent to 20,292,000 pesos, to any families if their relative has been vaccinated but dies due to COVID-19 vaccine. The government will also provide up to 209,000 yen or around 95,000 pesos to cover any funeral cost. Moreover, Health Minister Norihisa Tamura said that families could also receive an amount of around 5 million yen or 2.3 million pesos each year if anyone who gets immunized suffer a long-term disability. This has been a long-standing policy in Japan which covers any kind of vaccination, not only COVID-19 vaccine. However, it recently made news when Mr. Tamura brought this up at a budget meeting. Japan has started their COVID-19 immunization plan last week and inoculated health workers against coronavirus. Currently, Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine is the only approved vaccine in the country, but they only received limited number of doses due to limitations in supply. Japan is hoping for an increase of COVID-19 vaccine supply to start immunizing the elderly in April. Jago? Thank you, Ia Devera, reporting live from New Zealand. NASA celebrated as Perseverance rover lands on Mars last week. But there was more to the story as NASA officials later said it contained a hidden message. Early Briones will tell us why. 
NASA's Perseverance rover Mars landing was made even more special as its large parachute contained a secret message for its viewers upon its monumental arrival. Internet detectives cracked the message within hours. The parachute was designed to spell out a hidden note in binary code along the white and red strips of the 21-meter huge parachute. They are mighty things. The message it carried is a famous line from President Theodore Roosevelt. The saying is the Perseverance team's motto as it is also emblazoned on the walls of Mission Control at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Adam Stelzner, Perseverance Chief Engineer, confirmed the message on Twitter. Meanwhile, NASA released new images showing a gorgeous panorama of Mars. The first high-definition photos of the planet shows the rim of Jezero Crater, a prehistoric lake that is believed to have had water and life billions of years ago. Early Briones, UN TV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Malacanang said the statement of Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara that many policemen do not follow protocol during anti-illegal drug operations only proves that the country's domestic legal system is working. Dante Amento details why. Look. Yes, Dante? Herlin Justice Secretary Minardo Guevara told the United Nations or UN Human Rights Council yesterday that many police anti-drug operations under the Duterte administration violated rules of engagement. Guevara said the standard protocols for coordination with other law enforcement agencies were not followed. It was also noted, among others, that in more than half of the records reviewed, the law enforcement agents involved failed to follow standard protocols pertaining to coordination with other agencies and the processing of the crime scene. Based on their preliminary findings through the recently created interagency review panel, enforcement agents asserted that subjects in the anti-drug operations resisted and fight back, but yet no full examination of the weapons or evidences gathered was conducted, Guevara added, areas with the highest number of anti-illegal drugs operations that resulted to death were Bulacan, Pampanga, Cavite, and parts of the national capital region. Law enforcement agents asserted that the subject of the anti-drugs operations resisted arrest or attempted to draw a weapon and fight back. Yet, no full examination of the weapon recovered was conducted, no verification of its ownership undertaken, and no request for ballistic examination or paraffin test was pursued until its completion. The DOJ has submitted its preliminary findings to the PNP, which subsequently said to conduct appropriate investigation on the matter. Meanwhile, Harleen Malakanyang says that the Justice Department's pronouncement shows that the country's domestic legal system is working. Itong uh, naunang uh, pahayag ng ating Secretary of Justice ay nagpapatunay na seryoso po tayo sa obligasyon natin na mag-imbestiga at maglitis dahil hinaharap po natin ang katotohanan na posible pong may ilang mga uh, alagad ng batas na kinakailangan sigurong managot sa ating batas dito sa Pilipinas. And that's the latest live. Back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Dante Amento, reporting live. President Rodrigo Duterte urges the public to pray more amid the challenges everyone is facing. Rosa Licons explains why. Only God can save the planet Earth. This was the statement made by President Rodrigo Duterte last night during his weekly public address. The chief executive said only God can save people as the world is being confronted with many problems. Thus, everyone should pray more, he said. No one, we have the, the, the typhoons and the uh, hot, and, hot weather and the, long, the cold weather. Usually in December. Pero ngayon, ho, wala ng panahon sa bagyo. The bagyo can come anytime. Nagwawala ang tubig nga sa dagat. Eh. Uh, so many things really coming our way. Problems. 
But uh, if you want to have an advice, if you are ready to get one, there is only one thing really that can save this planet. It's God. Maybe we should pray more. The president also said he intends to pray more. The issue was mentioned as he was discussing the impacts of climate change in the Philippines. According to the president, the country has been greatly affected by the warming of the planet. But he was grateful to God Almighty because the first typhoon that hit the country did not leave wide and severe damage. Uh, O-ring? Uh, unang, unang sa nag, nag yung mga taga pag-asa ang kalebel niya sa Mindanao tapos may maya hinintay niya ng ilang uh, oras umakyat na kaya tinamaan yung Surigao tapos papunta na sa nag ano lang nag hang, nag, nag coastline lang siya ang Mindanao was spared Dava was spared uh, we have to thank the good Lord for that. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. As the President urges us to pray more, we are also inviting everyone to join our global prayer for humanity from Monday to Friday, 9.30 p.m. Philippine time through these social media accounts. Behind the News, February 25, 2021. I am Juanine Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I'm Angelo Castro III. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am Mariela Toza, sitting in for William Theo, live from Perth, Australia. We serve the people, we give glory to God. <laughs>